So welcome to Zima board and Zima blade reinstall video. In this video, we will be reinstalling Zima board, but the reinstallation process is the same for both of them. In this video, we'll be installing Ubuntu on uh, Zima board. Uh, of course, Zima has its own OS called CAS OS, which you also can download and make bootable USB thumb drive and install it as well. But I need Ubuntu as I will be installing custom uh, server on it. And I want to see if custom server works perfectly on it or doesn't and how it actually works. Uh, why I'm showing you both, because before you go to the installation process, you need three things. For Zima board, you and Zima uh, blade as well, you need a HDMI 4K adapter. This comes with a bundle if you purchased it. And also, uh, second thing is USB thumb drive, where we'll have our like Ubuntu or whatnot installed. Let me quickly plug them in. And uh, third thing, if you want to install the Zima Blade, then you need a extender from USB Type-C to USB 2 for A ports and Type-C. Type-C is for power. Here you need to connect your keyboard and USB thumb drive. As, uh, as you can see, Zima Blade doesn't have it only has one USB 3.1 port, but doesn't have another port. And for installation, you need basically a keyboard. So yeah, these are the things that you need to start your installation process. I will be installing in this video on a Hyper-V SSD drive, the OS. But the installation, if you don't have SSD drive, is the same for internal memory. But the key difference between installing on SSD drive and internal storage is that internal storage has 29 gigabytes. And I want to run custom on Zima board and see what I can do with it, as well as I want to run several experiments like Kali Linux, Ubuntu, and stuff like that on from the SSD drive because Docker images also takes some space. I want to do a lot of experiments. After experiments, I'm planning to reinstall it back to CAS OS. So I think I will create another video for that once I will get back to that because, well, I need several experiments. So without further ado, let's dive in, creating USB thumb drive with the Ubuntu installation. I will show you that and also how to install it. And I'm creating this from A to Z. I don't know how many people will watch till the end, but this is a tutorial for a person who doesn't have IT knowledge and want to do something like that. As I, this channel is also for providing education into IT field and how people can do a lot of stuff. So. Hope you enjoy it. If you find it interesting and also educational for you, share with other people that might benefit from this all information and might need it. Thank you very much. So let's get into it. So first things first, what we need to do, let's go to the Google and search for Ubuntu. We need Ubuntu server, get Ubuntu server, and let's download 2404.1 LTS. This is long-term support. That means that you will receive updates, including vulnerability updates and security patches. So we need to wait and the download starts. I will skip forward once the download is finished for the next steps. Once our Ubuntu has been downloaded, we now need to download Balena Etcher. This is a software with which you can create a bootable thumb drive with ease and without any like worries. Uh, I have used previously Rufus. You can use Rufus on Windows as well, but uh, lately I more like this software than any other. I'll open and plug in our USB thumbed drive, thumbed flash drive. So we will be flashing from the file. We need to find our Ubuntu image, select it, select the target, a data USB flash drive. That's mine. If you have some Kingston or something else, it will be written Kingston. And let's do the flash. It now asks us for the password. And once we have provided the credentials, it now starts to flash, as you can see, one percentage. ETA is around five minutes something. So, so once our image is ready, we can remove our flash drive and move to the Zima board now. So since I don't have any capture cards, I'm filming the screen. And in the future, I will have capture cards, so the videos will be a bit different and much better, much professional. So once we have plugged in our Zima board, it automatically boots up. We need to constantly press delete to get into the bias. Once we are in bias, let's go to the boot. And now let's change from the Kingston 
to a data flash drive. Save, changes and exit. And now it should boot automatically into the Ubuntu installation. Try our port install server. The parts where it will be loading the operation system and other stuff, I will fast forward them because those are non-interesting parts. I will only show the configuration parts explaining them a bit. So we are now at the language menu. I will select English. I will go without update. Done. Because it offers us newer version of Ubuntu installation, although we already downloaded the latest one. Uh, we will have Ubuntu server. Done. Now it will automatically connect to my test network, grab the IP address, let's continue. If you don't have DHCP enabled, then you need to configure manually IP address. But most of cases, people have DHCPs enabled and therefore they don't need anything. The IP address automatically fetch from the DHCP pool. Uh, now it will check our connection, download some repositories that it needs, some packages. All done. And now we are at the front part, the disk. Again, configure. Let's go to with tab. I'm navigating with tab to between menus. And now we, I can go and destroy my already installed installation that I have on the data drive. Mount, and here is our disk 240 gigabytes SSD that I have deleted safely. And as you can see, that the primary disk now it shows is the CASA, well, sorry, not CASA, but uh, Zima built in which is 29 gigabytes, which uh, is not enough for what I'm planning to create. And delete. So uh, we have identified our Kingston. Let's click on free space, uh, the GPT partition. I will create swap five gigabytes as I'm planning to have a lot of experiments. So this will be my swap memory. Next one, I will create the boot. So I will give it one gigabyte. Well, okay, XT4, and this will be boot. And the rest of the disk drive I will convert into root. I will not create any home partition. So we have swap boot and 217 gigabytes storage that I can use on my projects and what I want. So yes, continue, continue. And now we need to input our name. You can put input anything. Name in. Server name. Uh, home. Home less server. Username will be Walters IT and my password. I suggest use a secure password, not uh, short, to use long, and the more complex, the better it is. We don't want any pro versions. We need SS, install OpenSSL, that is SSH connection, so that we can have uh, no additional modules at this time. And now we'll install the Ubuntu on. And now our installation is complete. We can go to reboot now. Unplug our USB tumbler drive. You can see it shows that it failed to mount CD-ROM, but we didn't have any CD-ROM. And it asked us to press enter. So once we press enter, it goes now into reboot. And once it's rebooted, it should come up as Ubuntu. And we now have 
fully functional Ubuntu on our Zima board. Install it on a SSD drive, so it's ready to go. If you didn't like use SSD drive, you could also install it on your Zima board on the internal memory that is 29 gigabytes. So once we have installed our Ubuntu, we can now go to our terminal, SSH, username, 118. And as you can see, it asks us for confirming the fingerprint of the secure connection, that is, which is encrypted. And once we confirm it, we can type in our password. And we are in inside our fully installed Ubuntu on the Zima server. Now, once we are in, we can do sudo su, enter the password again, and we are root user. So this is how you install Ubuntu or any other operating system on the Zima board and Zima server and Zima blade. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one. Cheers.